Welcome back to episode 9 of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, where this is not going to be a positive episode at all. Uh, we have been abducted. So chapter 14, Into the Future. So in the last one, we got dragged into the dimensional hole by Dusknor, of all people. Losing consciousness again. And now we get the first... I mean, we've seen this scene before. It was brilliantly kind of preempted in a previous scene. I think it was where Dusknor was describing the future that Grover was trying to create, and it looked exactly like this. We get the first dark music as well. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Master Dialga. And there is the first interaction of... I, well... Finally succeeded in the capture. And there is Dialga. Those who seek to alter the course of history must be removed from history. So it's kind of cleverly written such that we don't know what Diogo has actually said, but Dustnor clearly understands. Now we're back with us. We get the dark music for the first time. It's a jail. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, this is, in my opinion, so brilliantly done, this part of the game, where we're, you know, the characters don't know what's going on. We, as the player, don't really know what's going on. Apart from that scene we've seen, just seen with Dusnor and Dialga, who, at this point, I think it's more or less clear that they are villains. Because, I mean, Dusnor dragged us in, we saw that. It's going to be a long time. I mean, the partner Pokemon doesn't want to believe what has happened for a long time. So we're stuck in jail by the looks of it. That's not grabbed us, dragged us into the dimensional hole. Is this the future? Why are we even here? That is the question. Why did Dustmore drag us in? Sam's just, just like so in denial of everything that's happened. How are we supposed to get back to our world here? Yeah. Doors are open. So do I, or... Oh dear, yep, so do I, definitely evil. They've blindfolded us. Now I think this scene here is possibly one of the most iconic in the whole game. It's just done so well. Yeah, one reveal at a time. With the third one being particularly intriguing. It's us two. But there's clearly space on the screen for a third. Who is it? It's Grobot. Okay, they're prepared to get rid of us for good. Oh dear. So obviously this is a kid's game. They never actually use the word kill or die or anything like that, but that's what's about to happen. They're about to execute us, essentially. I understand why they want to get rid of you, Grobot, but why else? So at this point, Grobot still seems kind of evil. He clearly just doesn't care about us. <laughs> The whole place is revealed. There's the Sabler in formation. I love that little communication they do with their eyes. So it happens to be Dusknor's underlings. The Great Dusknor. Still referring to him as that. Good. See, it's, it's such denial. It's like really well written. So it's just screaming out, it's me. What are you doing? We need to be rid of them. Sam's so still in denial. Grobo just saying, don't even waste your time. Can we get 
straight away. Give me a full cooperation. Grover wants us to work with him. He's talking to me. What can you do right now? Um, right, there's two incorrect options here. I'm just going to go through the chat options. No, an item's no good. I mean, if we're in jail, presumably they would have confiscated our items. Use a move? I know that's the wrong option as well. Basic. What about a normal attack? Well, that'll do. So Sam just about willing to cooperate there. Be vigilant to the end. Especially that Grover. I think Duskmore so clearly believes he's won at this point and it's just all over here. When he, does he even stay in the room? He does, I think. So I use claws. I'll just be an avenue for escape. Yeah, the park mo part of the Pokemon is just so in a mess of emotions now. It's really well written. Well written. There we go, there's the Fury Swipes. Endure it. There's a break. Now, attack. We've gone. Grovar's Luminous Orb. And we're gone. We have vanished. They're after us. But we haven't got anywhere at all. We're underground. It's Grover using Dig, I believe. I'm sure knows many moves. I suspect he knows four. <laughs> because that's all you can have. So at this point it's interesting because we start running at this point, but they're ahead of us, so I don't know why we don't just wait a little while. Oh. Writing. Running out of the stockade. Grover just wanting speed. That's right. We're in the future. Who knows? Yeah, Grover very kind of definitive. He knows exactly what he has to do and doesn't worry about anything he doesn't have to do. Very much in the moment. Exit is right there. We did it, we're outside. This is the scene. Like it's... I forget, it's foreshadowed so well. Because this is the scene Dustin was describing that he claimed Grover was trying to bring about. But we get to the future and we find that is exactly what's happened. It's horribly dark, not even the wind blows. If everything's stopped. Oh, so blight. Run. That's the rest. We only cooperated with him because we had to. Never promised to go with him. So Sam still calling Grove old bad Pokemon. And at this point in the game I think it's you know, it, it seems as if he still is. They're just different teams of bad Pokemon. So I'm the bad boy and that Dustin or is the good guy. Yeah, Grove are perfectly logical and Sam just doesn't want to accept it. Doesn't mean I should be trusting you. Grover again, doesn't care. Staying on the move. And off he goes. I 
not wait for morning. Again, still just in denial. Morning never comes. It's a world of perpetual darkness. The planet has been paralysed. And now Sam catches on to, I guess, what we the player already know. Yeah, flashing back to Dusk Noor's description. And this is the same, like, when he claims this is what Provile was trying to bring about. There you go. This did so well done. ruin of the world. And that's exactly what it is. Hard to understand how the planet has been paralysed in the future. Yeah, so I don't think Grover is going to give us any explanation yet. It's supposed to be caused by all those time gears going missing. We did everything we were supposed to. Three spirit Pokemon said they'd return the time gears. Despite everything, planet's still paralyzed in the future. Uh oh, side light. Run. So we get our second bout of um dark music now, the first dungeon thing. And I absolutely love pretty much every track that's from the future. It's unfortunate that you can never revisit these dungeons after the main game. I think you can, there's a couple of mods that do it, but not in the vanilla game. The game does such a good job of, like, getting across just how kind of dark and desperate the times are. Because all of the dungeons are dark, all of the overworld is dark, all of the themes are dark, just everything. It's just kind of a, a complete overwhelming of kind of exactly what is happening. And it's just done so well, the dialogue in particular. They just kind of, I mean, the dialogue sets up how dark the place is more than anything else, I think. And interestingly, this floor layer is exactly the same on every floor as the Sky Tower Summit in the first game. I think 1, 4, and 7 are kind of nice floor layouts, and every other floor up to 8 is this horrendous one where you have to just, it's corridors in the middle and rooms around the edge, and you just have to visit every one. Yeah, exactly the same as Sky Tower Summit, minus the Aerodactyls using agility and just ruining your life. Skull moves instead. But we have a type advantage. Surprised by the dittos every time. <laughs> I just forget why. Why isn't that super effective? Ah, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, traps are very well placed in the later game, as it turns out. They're out to get you. Oh. I did not do a very good job there. Ouch. Sam's gonna. Oh, let's... No. Right, let's get Sam there. And we feed him range and then quick attack. Not that it would do much, no. Good enough. So we get a nice floor now. Now. 50? I guess the explosion does a percentage of your health rather than a set damage. But CMs are rubbish. There's a lot of them. Right. Um, I think Grumpig's got quite a resistance to special moves, so tackle. I don't know what protection that is. No, okay, that must be protection against special as well. Yeah, protection against special, not against normal attacks, not physical moves. 
Double speed for normal attacks. Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe not that good after. Love the fact that they're just kind of looking at us from across the chasm. I'm not the same with all of his other moves. Yes, I am. I mean, that seems like the best move anyway, but just for the sake of it. And he still hasn't got a type advantage master. Still. Interesting. Can any of us use that? Sam can use that. That is, I think, Sword Stance is speed and attack. This is attack by two levels. Maybe not that good then, I think. Yeah, in this game, speed and accuracy are far more important than just the normal stats. Might be worth using, actually. I mean, there's not very many boss fights. I think there's only one in the entirety of the future, but still be worth using. In terms of relative difficulty, yeah, we still haven't been beaten in any of the main game. I think we've been beaten in every single one of the special episodes, but I think, like, I always struggle a lot more in dungeons than I do against bosses. Like, you don't need particularly complex tactics that kind of almost take no damage from every boss. It's just to kind of have a good C, like a quick or a violent, use smokescreen, which, handy if you've got a Pokemon that you can use smokescreen, like Cyndaquil or Presume Charmander can use it as well, I don't know. And then just keep unloading attacks, slow them down if you can, stun them if you can, and then just unload, and you get them a few times. In terms of difficult bosses in the game, the final two, I would say, are the only real difficult ones. And by that point, you've usually got hundreds of revival seeds, so it's generally fine. Uh, yes, that's what we want, Crunch, beautiful, let's get rid of Bite. I think Crunch is better in pretty much every way. Crunch lowers defense as well, so if you keep using it, you're bound to do a hell of a lot. Beautiful, we'll keep that. Still want some ice moves. Well, I want ice beam ready for some. Ice beam or water pulse. And then for me, I just want flamethrower. Right, so this should be the final floor. Don't think I'm going to get away with not eating an apple. Let's find the stairs pretty quickly. I always want to be just ultra conservative with items in this game, so I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna run out of belly, but I'm just gonna try and make it to the stairs with zero hunger, or zero belly. Oh, I've run out of fire as well. I know it's the last four. <laughs> I don't want to waste any items. I think I might only have one or two max elixirs as well. I only lose one HP per move. I think in DX it's three per turn. Uh, not good. Oh, I can't wait. Uh. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> but I don't want to use any items because <laughs> I just don't. Uh, Alright, just use water gun, bang him in one turn. Don't miss. Good boy. Or I'm buried for myself, save the apple. That's five hunger. Fine for the rest of this four. There we go. Didn't even need it. Job done. Dark theme comes back in. Rest a bit here. It's a lovely scenic area for it. Frozen waterfall. Completely frozen in time. 
Why did Dustnor bring us here? The great Dustnor, who is so kind to us, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sam's got an idea. Mention the screen. Touch the waterfall. Touch in the water and. Mm. No. I'm not sensing anything. So yeah, again, this is just. Like, it's a small moment, but it's so good in like. It very much conveys the theme that you are all alone. Like, nothing is going to help you. You've been taken here and you're in a dark future alone. And, like, it's dark for a kid's game, but brilliantly written. Ready and go. Got the next dungeon theme. I think this is kind of the only thing from the future that's not like overly dark. There is kind of an element of a little bit of cheekiness to this to this one. Dark hill. It's still very much dark in colour, but we don't have the big open spaces in this one, so. I think, if anything, that makes this one harder, because Ghost Pokemon can go through walls and attack through walls, instead of it just being open completely. So yeah, Ghost Pokemon in walls is one of the most dangerous things in pretty much every Mystery Dungeon game. Although, so now, I can't remember how they really work in the later ones, but... Yeah, Sky Tower, you get a Dusk Hole in the wall, you are screwed, because they can attack you and you can't hit them. Need to set everyone to run away and then kind of get them in the corridors. Just eat that one. I'm tempted to retract what I said about this thing being cheeky. It's still quite dark. Check my moves because I've only got one that's not a normal move. Or smokes good. Floor layout's quite a bit nice for this one. Oh dear, right, that's an issue. So at this point, we can't attack Ghastly, but he can attack us. So, the only thing you can really do is get away from here and fight the Pokemon. And then filter him through the corridor like that. Sam into this as well. Yeah, didn't think of that. <laughs> that was not a good job. Oh dear. Right, we're in Berry and hope Sam doesn't move to the right. Oh, he's got a three and four chance. Okay, nice. Lovely. Be quite lucky. I think he had like some chance to move to the right. There you go, Lava Plume. I'm going to keep getting excited until I get it. Take out the paid off first. Nice. Right. Are you ready? Oh no, I don't have very many max elixirs. Do I have any? No, right, I'm just gonna have to do a week or so. All the way around there. Yeah, I should have packed a few. <laughs> I should have anticipated what would happen, because obviously I played the game before. I should have done a bit of packing before we got taken. Stay there. Oh dear. Uh, Alright, I need him to move right, really. I need another two and three chance of doing that. Okay, uh, no. <laughs> still not good. Um, there's not much I can do, really. I need Sam to run. No, not that way. <laughs> no. Oh dear. Alright, I think I had a roll call. Let's use that now. 
Nice. Okay. Good enough. Good enough. Oh, I haven't got any good damage in moves, but at least I can actually attack now. Okay. Good enough. And there's the roll call of back already. That's handy. Uh, oh, well, let's sound play this one. Save all these moves again. Forget every time I do that. He's got a sneak. Nice sneak. I can't remember what the moves is. The one that attacks two bars. Yeah, Ghost types love that move. It's one of the most frustrating moves. Should have let Sam take that, really. That's gonna hurt. Everything hurts. I don't know how many floors are in this one. I guess 12 or 13. I have to beat the border as well, I think, to get away. Mm, yeah, I think it. Actually, it I mean, you might have Sucker Punch, but. Probably a better move to use to be honest rather than just straight out attacking because I'm not doing much damage with normal fight moves. Revival? No. <laughs> I don't think the future is very rewarding when it comes to items. You don't get much, although. My screen energy ball. I mean, that'd be brilliant if you were a grass type and that was you getting it for the first time, but. Sadly, not for us. Remember if countering works through smokescreen. We're nearly there. But I think this might be a two bite dungeon. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh dear. I've got enough revivers, yeah, realistically, to accept a death and just restore moves, but I'm try not to. Try and do it properly. Every TM, just in case it's flamethrower. I mean, I doubt it even spawns it, but just in case. Now. Getting a lot of levels very quickly, though. Remember this scene as well, another iconic one. And this one here is very much reminiscent of the Mount Blaze thing in the first game. When you're on when you've come through Mount Blaze, and you're talking with the partner about how far you've come and how you've got each other's backs. Isn't that the stockade? Probably. Great Dustnor saved us more than once, taught us many things. Maybe he looked up to him. Was he deceiving us? I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> still can't believe it. Yeah, it's still just a mess of emotions. The time gear theme there. When can we stop running? Can we return to our world? So I guess the... I mean, this whole segment of the game is very much similar to when you get kind of outcast in the first game. But... Uh, 
in that game you kind of you're given a bit of prep when you're gonna have to go away for a while. In this game, no prep whatsoever. You're just taken instantaneously. No access to items. Nothing. I think the game does very well here not to give you like a flashback to the guild. Like it gives you no glimpses of light whatsoever. It makes you want it makes you miss just everything. The safety of Treasure Town and the Guild. I'm scared too. But can't give up now. If we don't keep going, the Sableye will catch us. Think of something to bring summer. But let's find Grover and let's return to our world. I don't think saying that to Sam is going to be of much comfort at this point because he still doesn't trust him. And we, the player, don't really know if we should trust him or not. But let's return to our world. I don't know, but let's do it. And to first find Grover. I mean, I mean, both options are dialogue, pretty much say the same thing. Then what? Want to ask him something? Grover went to our world here the first time, so he should know how. Isn't Grover a bad Pokemon? Didn't he come to our world to steal the time gears and put the planet into paralysis? So I think if you were playing for the first time, I think you would be thinking, I don't know. I hate this idea. I don't think there's any good dialogue options that get a brilliant response from the partner here. But trust a Pokemon like Grover, never. We don't have a choice. Must rely on Grover. Let's chase after Grover. Let's work out how to get back to our world. There we go. And this scene here is more reminiscent than anything of the original Mount Blaze scene in the first game. Almost gave up once again. But we're not alone. We've got each other. Let's keep going. Let's get back to our world together. So I think that might be... I mean, that theme doesn't come up very much. Yeah, it might just be the end of the game and then where you get that theme. The music. Robo should be ahead of us. Here's our... Is this the third dungeon team? I think it is. Yeah, Chasm, Cave, and then Dusk Hill. I forget the names of these places. <laughs> just, just two random despairing words stuck together, all of these dungeons. Let's roll out. Seal the ruin. So this is a bit more, well, ruinous than the other two dungeons. You get a poison type rather than the classic future ghost or dark types. Which is good because I've only got one move that isn't a normal class. Yeah, this theme again is just. It, I mean, all of the themes so far in the future have just so. I mean, the colours, the music, the dialogue, it's just. It does such a good job all put together. It just attacks the senses with what you're supposed to be feeling, which is. We're all alone in this world of darkness, and we've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to say it about eight times during this episode, but it is just so well done. The thing is, it didn't even need to be well done, because it's a kid's game. But it's well done regardless. I haven't seen any ghost type Pokemon so far. Bit of a break from the norm. Can be a lot of grass types. Nice for me, given that I'm a fire type. I've got a 
feeling that's a good team up there. I don't know why. Oh, that's alright. That can come. I probably had that feeling because I picked up this exact move in this dungeon before, but hits all enemies in the room and it's got a hit ratio of pretty much max. I think it always does 18 damage as well, so it's. Sam can use it as well. I mean, I like three of Sam's moves at the moment, so I'm going to get rid of the tackle. So this will be a decent move if you have nothing else in a monster house and you just happen to be right in the middle of it for whatever reason. Given that it does only 18 damage, it's not a perfect move, but it's reliable in that sense. could if you went on a trip trap and just didn't pick up that bow and moved on to the next floor. I wonder if you could ever get it back. Because I'm pretty sure you can't ever lose it by getting knocked out. It's just the one item you keep. Oh, oh dear. Didn't do that very well. I'm going to tank the hits here. Only 25 damage, not too bad. Avoided three fights. What Sam says at this point. He's just got his normal dialogue. Nothing specific to the future, by the way. This is two parted, yeah. This theme is. It's possibly my favourite out of all the ones from the future because this is. This theme is just like, it's the end of the world. I mean, it's not story wise, but it's just so dark and just epic. And I think we get a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on with Grover now. Yep. Walking past suspicious shape on the ground. Should be at the forest. Interesting. Wonder how those two are doing. How to complete my mission, even if it meant making sacrifices. What does he mean? Who's that? We are here. We are spirit in. Oh. It looks like Grovile is down. Deep silver in. Yeah, this theme I think one I think this is probably my favourite one from the future. It's unnecessarily the hot. Thunderbolt. I mean, even though we're not of the types to use that, I want that. Because that's probably like, I mean, it's the best electric move. Uh, what we getting with the I want that in the event that we recruit an electric Pokemon and want it to stay in the team. There you go. This part of the theme in particular. It's so end of the world, that part. Tragically ruined by the level enough theme. But... Swift. Interesting. Um, I, don't know what I mean, the power's not that great. I think I'll probably get rid of that. It's a good move because it never misses, but I'm not going to go for it. Yeah. 
one that's here. It's worth the fight just in case it's flamed for or I speed my water box. It is! Wow! <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. I am over the moon with that. That is the one move I wanted. Let's just check it is actually decent. Yeah, hit five, power five, and may leave the target confused. 100%, that's exactly what I want. Let's just check up the power on. Hit ratio is slightly higher, power slightly lower. Okay, no, I want water pulse. Wow, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Alright, Sam can now attack at range. Maybe that's the one redeeming factor. <laughs> Beautiful. But it's it. <laughs> so many good moves in this dungeon. That's the one seemingly redeeming factor of the future. Good TMs on the floor. Oh dear. Oh, right by the stairs. Did you have to do that? Oh, oh, Sam doesn't know where I am either. Okay, that's an issue. Will Sam just wander off on his own. He'll just stay there. So. Uh, okay, it's worn off. TMs. I mean, I'm tempted just to explore every room of this dungeon just in case flamethrowers kick me. It feels like it would be. Given the water pulse, thunderbolt, bullet seed of all people, it does feel like flamethrower would be as well. You know what, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to explore every room. I don't know how many floors are left, though. And there's a boss at the end of this. Ah, oh, that was a waste of a thought. Oh, Gravel is down, as we suspected. Stay back. It is kind of still intriguing that, although Sam definitely doesn't trust Gravel at this point, he was keen to make sure he was okay. An enemy lurks nearby. It's right beside you. And then slow turn. Terrified. Least of all you. Hundred and eight different spirits. I don't know if that's like always a hundred and eight spirit thing, but I know it's not. Can we get Sam to use water pulse? Yes. Beautiful. Oh, use it again. No. Oh. Yes. Lovely. Right, some low health already, so not too much worried. I think Spiriting is one of the few Pokemon that isn't super affected by anything. I think it's got Levitate, and I think it's only weak to ground. Although in my head, Dunce Boss is... Not Dunce Boss, um, a little floaty electric one. I think I can't do that. <laughs> Confused, smoke screen. Just taking a beating. And there we go, we got it. Yeah, the yeah, thought I had before this is I don't know where in this game you can recruit spirit in, because I presume you can recruit everything. And that just turns back into a little a little useless thing on the ground. Looks like Ditto. They got spooked and ran. It's cunning, that Pokemon. Wearing <laughs> up my nose to control my body. But not a bad Pokemon. Normally a timid Pokemon. There are many Pokemon like that in the future. Should be good, but they've become bitter and twisted. Now all 
you finally trust me. Don't really trust you. And Grover's not having it. No point in continuing if there's no trust. He's got a point. We don't know what's what anymore. Yeah. We want to learn as much as possible. us about this future and why you came to our world. To accept everything you say is the truth right away, I'll listen, then decide. Grove I will allow that. Okay, it's time to learn the truth. Chapter 15, the secret of the planet's paralysis. We're going to get all the answers now. All of them. Whether we believe them or not is, I guess, up to the player. This will do. Might be able to spot us here. Why did the planet become paralysed? Date back to our time, one of the past. Started with the collapse of Temporal Tower, which was governed by the Elder. The Alga, he lost control. The Alga's lost all his reason, governed by darkness. Transformed into primal Dialga. I'm going to say the Alga and Dialga interchangeably. The guy feels no emotion, seeks only self preservation, so he prevents history from changing. That's why Dialga wants him gone, because I tried to change history. So I tried to stop the planet's paralysis. In fact, to our world, you could prevent it. It's the opposite of what we're told. Which are the ones stealing time gears. Collecting time gears because they were needed for preventing the planet's paralysis. Needed to take them to Temporal Tower, put them in place. And that would have reversed the collapse. While it's true that removing a time gear from a specific place causes time to stop in that area, it's only temporary. Time would have been fully restored to normal once the time gears were back. About all the things Dustnor said about you. What else could it be? All lies! Claims Dustnor, because he really is an agent sent from this future by Primal Dialga. We sort of knew that already. We knew Groval was uh, Dustin was after Groval, and that was why he was in the past. So I don't know why that's too surprising. He sent Dustin after him. Can't believe it at all. Sam's still in denial. Like I think at this point, as the player, I mean, see, it differs from person to person, but I completely believe Groval at this point, completely, even in my first playthrough. Can't believe you. Let me get the time gear theme. I'm sure there might be multiple versions of the time gear theme. I don't can't really remember, but this seems like the sad version. Looking back over what we've been through, Grover said it's reasonable. It makes perfect sense. And Sam knows it. Where's he going? Gotta see dust more. Stand a chance. He's the partner is just such a mess of emotions at this point. He just doesn't want to believe what he knows is a hundred percent true. Back to the past again to stop the planet's paralysis. He needs to find Celebi. Absolutely beautiful tune. Come with me or not, it's your choice. You two decide. Should we do? I mean, both the main character and, well, no, to a certain extent, Robin again, but. 
power lost. Happened back in our war. We have to get back to the past. Okay, I think it's quite rightly left open to interpretation whether or not we trust Grovel at this point, but I mean, I trust him. I think he's telling the truth. And I always do. What Grovel said is right. Okay, Sam's coming round. Chop to Grovel. We have to get back. Back to our own world. So many iconic scenes in this part of the game in particular. I think we're going to see Dusknor and the Alga now. And that is Temporal Tower. It's just completely broken. It's not even a tower, it's just a mess. And I think they're at the peak now. It looks pretty much unrecognisable from when you see it later on in the game. But the stage has been set for the capture. So it looks like they're setting up a trap. Which we're about to walk into. It's that strange sensation. Had it before. Dusk Forest. <laughs> Every dungeon in this future is just... A word that is uh, synonymous with dark, followed by forest or cave or something. We should find Celebi somewhere in here. Find Celebi, the legendary time travel Pokemon. And go back, we find Celebi. She's in trouble too. Get ready soon. So the next dungeon will be Dark Forest, but we are going to leave that for the next episode. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all then. Peace.